What's up everybody, Brandon Johnson here again, and today we're taking a look at five patterns and sounds of bluegrass guitar. Now these five guitar techniques that I've picked up over the years are a great way to kind of make your guitar playing sound a little bit more like bluegrass. And these techniques you can add to really just kind of a basic foundational knowledge of the guitar, like open chords, maybe just basic soloing, some things that you know, most guitar players out there can probably integrate into their current skill set. Now these five techniques are the G run, the chuck, alternating bass, riffing off the octave, and passing runs and lead-in runs. Now these bluegrass guitar techniques can kind of be used on their own, whether you're playing lead, melody, or even rhythm guitar. But first, let's take a look at a couple of these techniques in detail, and specifically how you can integrate them into your playing, starting with the famous G run. All right, so the first and probably most common sound you're gonna hear in bluegrass guitar is what's called the G run. Now the G run sounds like this. Now there are countless variations on this famous lick. And if you check out my video on the G run, you can learn several different examples of this. And you can use this in a, in a bunch of different ways. It's used on its own as kind of a, an intro or an outro. It can be used as part of solos. That lick is, is super iconic and it really signals to the listener that, you know, this is bluegrass music. And it's fairly useful because it starts on the G note or the root note and it ends on the G note or the root note if you're playing a G. Now that same run in C, it's the exact same notes, just over a C chord, and it has the same similarities. It starts on the C and ends on the C. And the second most common sound and pattern in bluegrass music is what's called the chuck. So the chuck is simply a sound that's created by the downstroke of a pick. Now it's not, this is not unique to guitar. You can chuck on a mandolin, you can chuck on a banjo. Basically any instrument that's strummed, even a dobro, you can, you can do this basic kind of chuck sound. And the way it's used is it's used on the offbeat as a way to kind of accent the bass or to kind of you know, give it a little bit of rhythmic interest. And that's a really, really easy way to kind of make your rhythm playing sound like bluegrass. Now what's important here is to really capture the sound of the pick hitting the strings. And that's really important to kind of kind of create that chuck in your rhythm playing. And what you'll notice there is I'm playing sort of the root note of the chord on the one or on the quarter note. And then I'm playing the downstroke or the chuck on the offbeat, which is generally kind of just strumming out the rest of the chord. Now and the next sound and pattern of bluegrass guitar is what's called alternating bass. And this is kind of a general concept that you can use in your rhythm playing. And it involves kind of playing bass over your chords or bass notes over the chords that kind of emulate the bass player. And a lot of times what the bass player does is on the quarter note or on the offbeat, depending on the tune, they will often alternate between the root note of the chord, in this case a C, and the fifth of the chord. So the fifth of the chord, the fifth of C, is gonna be a G. So what you'll do is you'll alternate kind of between those two bass notes, those are kind of bass notes because they're in the lower register of the guitar, while you're playing your bluegrass rhythm. Notice what I'm doing there is I'm actually physically moving my finger from the root note to the fifth note or the C note to the G note. And one way you can kind of simplify that is you can play this sort of modified C chord here. So a normal C chord would look like this. And with this modified alternating bass type chord, you can take your root note or your ring finger here and put it on the third fret low E, which is a G. And then with your little finger, you can place it back down on the root note. And you're left with this kind of a chord. And then you can play your alternating bass without having to move your finger. And 
of course, there's many, many different ways to play alternating bass, and each chord is going to be different. But the general rule of thumb is that you're going to alternate between the root note of the chord and the fifth of the chord. So if we look at a D, for example, the root of D is D, and you can use that open D string there if you're playing the D chord out of the open position. And then your fifth is going to be an A. So you'll alternate between the D and the A. And the next sound and pattern of bluegrass guitar is what I like to call riffing off the octave. And so what you're doing here is you're playing a very specific pattern, which is making use of the same note in a different position on the neck. So if we look at a G chord here, this is probably the most common example. You'll hear this a lot as an intro or even as part of a solo. So what you're doing is you're using the same note, the open G, in a different position on the neck, right? So we have our, our G note here. And then right underneath it is an open G. And what you're doing is you're syncopating between those two strings and adding in a slide. So the slide is gonna come in from the third fret D to the fifth fret D. And then you're gonna hit that open G on a downstroke, followed by an upstroke and then play that G on the D string on a downstroke. And you can kind of create a pattern here that you can use as an intro or as part of a solo, but it's something that is very common in bluegrass music and it's gonna make your guitar playing, you know, kind of sound like bluegrass. Another cool way to do that, if you don't want to do the slide, the full three fret slide, you can just kind of do a little bit of a hammer on. And what I'm doing there is I'm playing with my middle finger, fourth fret D, and then hammering on with my ring finger on the fifth fret D. And of course you can do that in other keys as well. And it really works best if you have the root note of that chord available as an open string right underneath it. So for example, we could do this in D as well. Or we can do it in A. And the last sound and pattern of bluegrass guitar, of course there's many, but this is probably one of the more common ones that you'll hear, are passing runs and lead-in runs. So a lot of times rhythm guitar players in bluegrass style music will add in a lot of embellishments in between the chord changes. So for example, if you're playing a G to a D, So what you'll notice there is that I'm kind of just riffing right before I go into the D chord. I kind of play just a little two note or three note riff. And in this case, it's gonna be, if we're starting on a G chord, it's gonna be an open A, second fret A, open A again, followed by a quick open D, which is gonna be the root note of the D chord. So you're sort of playing a run or riffing into the D chord and landing on the D note. Let's try to combine these five bluegrass guitar concepts.
Thanks for checking out this lesson today. There's a lot more where that came from on my website, brandonjohnsonguitar.com, where I have every lesson I've ever made, including the full complete lesson video for every single tune, backing tracks, tab sheets, and sound slice integration. Level up your guitar playing and join the community at brandonjohnsonguitar.com. We'll see you there.